Someone in the last video commented that I should make the whole da 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 a new intro. So there you go. <laughs> anyway, in this video, I'll be showing you how to make the cutest and smallest TV VTuber model based on how I've made mine. Hope you enjoy. I want to quickly say thank you to everyone who made fan arts for me lately for the new design. And we hit 40k subscribers, so that's wow <laughs> thank you so much maybe for 50k i shall do another uh giveaway or the models that i have up on ko-fi let me know what you guys think all right so let's start i had to of course design my character brepa could have looked like this literally she could have looked like this all along <laughs> those are all of the old sketches i've been literally sketching this design for like four months i think so remember if you're trying to make something like me take your time if you watched my previous video i explained how i even came to redesign and what my previous designs were and i kind of wanted to go back to the good old fennec blip so i kind of look like a dog box mix it doesn't really matter at the end of the day i don't care <laughs> so after scribbling forever uh this is how blip came out she looks slightly different but as you can see it doesn't stop you if you draw a reference shade that looks slightly different than what you want it to be later on oh yeah that's how she came out in the end so then i finally moved on to blender i actually had some bases because i already make models if you didn't know by the way <laughs> i make models like these and i put them up on ko-fi you can buy them or get some for free coming soon some freebies for you all if you're interested please click the link down below to leading to my ko-fi but yes because i make those characters I already had bases that I could work from but despite that I really wanted to play with the proportions the plan for me was to be the smallest character <laughs> So the height of my character is actually one and a half head. If you make them smaller than that, you just become a bubble head. So that's not what I wanted to do. My bases that I've made before were like three head tall. And they were not really, you know, small enough yet. So I kind of had to rework quite a lot of it. So the base ended up looking like this. <laughs> If you're interested in actually following through, I will give you a quick list of the tools that I use the most for modeling because believe me, it may seem scary to use Blender, but it's not really as scary as it seems. You will end up using the same tools over and over and over again, really. So just get familiar with the ones that I'm going to list now. Always use the mirror modifier when you make anything for your model. Basically, make sure that it always snaps to the middle and it's always mirrored perfectly and always symmetrical. Symmetry in the model always is better than is asymmetry asymmetry works with like maybe some outfit you know different cuts but by default a lot of your model is supposed to be mirrored so that it looks better and more clean <laughs> then if you forget to mirror something or i don't know something becomes offset make sure you use the tool of symmetrizing you can literally just like go to edit mode with whatever thing you're trying to symmetrize mark whatever parts are not being symmetrical and then from the drop down menu just click symmetrize and it's gonna fix it for you then stuff for deleting or dissolving parts x click and delete the whatever you're trying to delete and a dissolving is a very useful thing especially if you're trying to make parts that are supposed to be less heavy in polygons you can dissolve an edge you can dissolve a face and you can dissolve a vertex then the opposite of dissolving it would be making you loop cuts so you just click ctrl r i think it is and you create a new loop cut and that allows you to you know add some more geometry so you can make the shapes look better more rounded and all of that then you have the loop knife option and that lets you just basically connect whatever vertices it's really useful if you're you now trying to add some new edges or whatever then extruding things extruding is like the number one thing that i do literally just click e on the selected little loop or little edge thing and then you just keep extruding and keep making it longer and make it into the shape that you need then of course for moving you use g so select whatever click g and you can move it around however you want very necessary to know <laughs> and then merging so if you have something that you need to merge connect together you can just select two things like vertices for example and then just click m and merge a tools is not a lot for you to be able to pretty much make whatever the hell you want those tools is all you need to be able to get started basically <laughs> then when it comes to marking seams and uv unwrapping actually my technique has not changed since last time i recommend following this video i follow it myself that's how i mark my seams then i also of course texturing the brepa this is super simple especially if you already drew the character 
character before you just color pick the colors and color it i'm not really skilled when it comes to rendering and coloring but that doesn't stop me from making models like this anyway so if you're worried about you know your art skills lacking or something <laughs> you don't have to worry too much then rigging so uh you can see the setup of the bones here when it comes to my ears i tested a few different setups to make you know the floppies as <laughs> the floppies as floppy as possible i ended up with this setup for the bones if you have longer taller ears on your character this setup works really well especially if you want to make them floppy and bouncy and all of that <laughs> and then my favorite part yes i'll never get tired of telling you that that's my favorite part of making models is the key shapes for this model specifically, I completely omitted the VR chat lip sync. Uh, so all I have is the basic VRM expressions. Uh, then I added the AR kit tracking. And then some expressions that I of course wanted. And that pretty much concludes uh, the blender progression. And then I was setting up the shading in Unity. Finally, we moved on to Unity. <laughs> so yeah, when you import it, same thing every time. You make sure that the rig is humanoid. Check all the bones if they're correct. And then set up the materials, so the shaders. And for my model, for the first time i actually thanks to one youtube comment thank you so much for telling me about this when the m2 shaders you can actually set up the outline width what this allowed me to do is actually add outlines to for example my face and not have very ugly eye lines white color means that it's enabled and black color means that it's disabled and of course any shades of gray make it gradually get thicker to what it's supposed to be then setting up the physics some values will look better or worse depending on the character and on the thing that you're trying to put physics too so i cannot tell you what's the perfect solution but if you're wondering this is the physics that i set up for my ears these are the values so if you want to you can copy them over to your character it's not necessary you don't have to copy my values and still get something you know decent by just playing around with the values yourself and lastly i actually omitted this part completely from the last video when i was making mochi so i'm super sorry about that. i didn't realize until someone in my discord pointed it out that i forgot completely to talk about how i set up blend shapes in unity to make up for that i will show you a little secret technique that i use if you ever wonder how i do things like this or this i just do this with my mouth or same thing if i smile well, this is the technique I'm about to show you right now. <laughs> For the specific blend shapes that I want a specific expression or a different mouth to come up, I just set it up to that AR kit blend shape. In simpler terms, if I want my smile to have eyes closed and have a blush, then I enable all of those things on that smile blend shape and it will allow for me to basically smile in real time and enable those things without me having to click any toggles any expressions it just does it by itself same thing for the other ones that i showed you so if you want to have a pout expression normally ar kit with your mouth to the side would do this that is the mouth being to the side but you can set up one side for example like i did to do the pout instead so to do that, for the mouth going to right side or to left side, whichever is your preference, I make that mouth come up instead. Set it up to do exactly that face that I wanted to make. It's a really nice and fresh way to make sure that you look expressive without, you know, having to worry about clicking things on your keyboard, stream deck or whatever. And there she was! I finally finished her! A lot of you really seem to enjoy the design, so I'm really grateful that everyone thinks that it looks cute. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't. Like and comment and see you in the next one bye